In this proof, we are going to look at the derivation of the velocity is equal to r omega formula, which is the formula that allows us to change uh, linear velocity in meters per second into circular velocity or angular velocity, which is measured in radians per second for an object moving on a circle. The diagram shows a very basic picture of what it would look like for an object. So if we start with our object, imagine that it's on a rope and it's going around this circle. And um, if we put it in down here at the bottom, at that particular point, it has a linear velocity at a tangent to that circle. And um, so it would have a velocity in approximately uh, that direction that I've drawn in with the vector arrow. As it travels around the circle, by the time it reaches the upper point, its velocity would have changed and it would be pointing in approximately a, a leftwards direction. But the thing about it is that all the time, the object is essentially just travelling around in a circle. So that means that it has an angular velocity, which we denote by the letter omega, one of the Greek letters. The first thing we're going to do in order to go from velocity into the or omega formula is we start off by saying the angle that's made in the center of our circle, which in this diagram is denoted by the letter, the Greek letter theta. That uh, angle that we have, theta, is equal to s divided by r. s is the arc length, which is that darkened uh, outer black line that I'm highlighting in red. So that's measured in meters, divided by the radius of the circle, which is also measured in meters. Our next step is to divide both sides of that formula by time. So we have theta divided by time, and we have s over r, and we include a divided by time in that as well. If we look at the left-hand side, theta divided by time, the angle in radians divided by the time is going to give us the angular velocity, which is the omega value. Over on the right hand side, if we concentrate on the s over t part, that's just the formula for linear velocity. That means that if we have linear velocity uh, given to us by the s divided by t part that I've highlighted in green, the distance divided by time, which is the arc length divided by time, we have a 1 over r still outside of that green circle. So that gives us 1 over r multiplied by s over t, which we have, is just linear velocity. Multiplying that will give us omega is equal to v over r. And the final step is to cross multiply. So we have that the linear velocity v, which was multiplied by the invisible one that's underneath the omega, we have the omega multiplied by r to finish off our cross multiply. And that is the proof of the v is equal to r omega formula.